This is a View from the Bridge official podcast of the Belfast Giants for Kingdom of the Giants.com. Today's Tuesday, the 22nd of the 2nd, 2022. Oh, we've spit that one out. 22nd of the 2nd, 2022. My name is Patrick. Two, 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 two. That's it. Four points on the board following a dominant display in the SSE and a pulling down of pants in the NIC. Uh, both very enjoyable, but one a little bit more stressful than the other. Uh, on this week's show, we've got the two wins to look at and a semi-final to prepare for. Uh, Simon cornered four of the lads at training today. We'll bring you those interviews. We'll have all the news from around the league. And uh, Griffin Reinhardt's our guest on the fan agenda. Um, one of our numbers in Tenerife. So, Mr. Kitchen, how are you? I'm all right. I'll be gimps away. Oh, sorry, my gypsies away in Tenerife <laughs> at the minute. So, it's... Um... <laughs> You know, it's, it, and it, I think it's. I think it is the first one he's missed since a I started. Long, doing long it. time. It's certainly a long, long time. Davy, very, very, I'm sure very, he hasn't very, missed very one when I've been on. Like he's like, like I, I, I miss them more often than Davy misses them, and Davy will. I'll be missing one in two weeks. So it's like, yeah, yeah it's a very rare occurrence. Uh, yeah, but uh, Mister Neil, how are you? Yeah, all good. Uh, I'm in the middle of booking my holiday to Eleven Reef this summer. Just hey. to top Davy by one. So. That old joke. Boys. That Best old part joke. of the week. Good to see you. <laughs> right, boys. Let's get stuck in, and we'll uh, we'll start with the game that took place on uh, on Saturday night at the SSE Arena. One, I was delighted to be able to attend myself and bring my kids to, which they really enjoyed as well. And it was a seven-one win for your Belfast Giants. The goals, well, the first goal of the game came from Carson Stadnick for the five flyers in 15-22, and then it was a glut of goals for your Belfast Giants. JJ Pickenich scored short-handed. Scott Conway scored. Slater Doggett scored. Tyler Soy followed that very quickly. Mark Cooper on the power play, 45-43. Scott Conway with another, and Mark Cooper with his second of the game, 55 10 runs out 7 1 victory. Uh, Jackson Whistle was in goal initially, nine shots against, one goal against. It's not what it says on the Elite League website, but I'm correcting it. Nine shots against, one goal against, 47 minutes. And he was replaced to massive adulation from the SSC, rightful adulation from the SSC arena crowd. Andrew Dixon came in for 13 minutes, five shots against, and no goals against. The other side, Shane Owen, 39 shots against, seven goals against. Your referees were Andy Dalton and Cameron Fox. Uh, for, uh, that shot count for the Belfast Giants uh, against the Belfast Giants is phenomenal. Um, Simon, it was a dominant performance front to back. Yeah, and to be honest, I know that the the, uh, the flowers start. I actually thought the, the started out really well. Um, they had a good opening, you know, they, well, good opening period. They got obviously take the lead. They're leading, uh, you know, one 0 going into the, the end of the first period, and I, I, I didn't still didn't feel, you know, I didn't feel nervous in any way. Some some games you go down a goal and you're sitting thinking, oh god, here we go. But you know, it didn't feel nervous in any way at all, and. You know, when you look back at the, the way we played in the first period, it wasn't bad. It, you know, they shut us down to a certain extent. We, we had a couple of great A chances. We made a couple of good saves. Um, but then, you know, just watching this first goal, all the hard work done by uh, Scott Conway along the wall. And when you get a shorthanded goal to get you going, as a player playing against a shorthanded, you didn't, and then you're not able to capitalise on their own power play opportunity, it can get to you. And I think it did get to them. Um, you know, once we got the second goal... Like this again, Conway, great finish by Scott Conway. Had a really good man of the match performance um, on the game itself. But once we got that goal again, I just knew we were going to push on. And coming out and scoring five goals in the third period was was excellent. And it's there, there's, it's it's great that everybody and all the lines are contributing. Um, you know, we can't just depend on that top line of Conway, um, Pickenich, and, and Goodwin. You know, although they, I think they combined for about six or seven points that night. But, uh, you know, Doggett's on the score sheet. Coops is on the score sheet. Um, you know, and Tyler Soy. So, you know, all three nines contributing. Not giving up much on the way of, of them going the other way. They did have a, you know, a one or two old man rushes in the first period. Nothing after that. Um, and again, I, I can't remember how many shots you said they had, Paddy, in the overall, but it wasn't very many. Um, but again, Officially, it was 14. You know, that's poor from, from any team. But you've got to give credit to the Belfast Giants for that because they just didn't let them through. You know, mm -hmm. when they've got the opportunity to, to get the shot on net, the boys are just closing them down really quickly. They can't handle the speed. Um, so really good to get the, the you know, the, the win, a comfortable win 
Um, but the best moment of the night was was Andre Dixon coming in. You know, I, I see how hard he works in practice. Um, I see that he's the last off. He was the last off again this morning. Um, you know, he, he goes on there, but I, I feel sorry for him on occasion. That, um, on the morning of the game on Saturday, Cons, Pekinich, um, Lewis Hook, Kier, or not Kieran Long, he was away getting his wedding sorted out. I'm not allowed to chirp, <laughs> apparently. Um, um, <laughs> there was well Jeff Baum, um, and there was another two guys as well, all huddled around the net. Just, you know, Darcy Murphy, he's all basically taking pucks on net, trying to get the shot, um, and then, uh, you know, following up for the rebound. And before, if it goes below the goal line, that's the game over, and they basically rotate around. But he was on there for 15, 20 minutes doing that. On his own, against seven or eight forwards or seven or eight guys, you know, trying to shoot the score pass. It's not easy. <clears throat> and, you know, sometimes he breaks sticks around his post, and sometimes it goes in a helicopter tour around the arena. But he's absolutely top, top notch. And, you know, being a... A third goalie when he when he knows he's not going to get much ice time, he knows he's not going to, you know, play many games, especially from the start. And for him to get the opportunity to come off for the first game over two years as well, by the way, was absolutely brilliant to see. And and he, again, you know, hopefully we can remedy that uh, goal coming off him because um, he's not happy about that. But yeah, um, he's a total, official he's a statistics team. does show, do show that Andrew Dixon conceded a goal which he did not do. Yeah, so but, uh, look, he's a total team player, a real good lad. We've had him on the podcast on numerous occasions, and yep. um, I think he's 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 an unsung hero for sure. The, the the adulation he received when he came on was fabulous. Like I went nuts myself. I've stood on the bridge next to my brother at that point, shipped the kids out at the second period break. Um, <laughs> yeah, Vintage I've stood next Patrick to the. <laughs> he has uh, having a beer with uh, with my brother Jarlath, and, uh, and and as soon as uh, Dicko came on, I was going nuts. It was exactly what, the whole arena was is exactly what you want to see. Um, Joel, your take on the game? Yeah, look, it says is a pr- pretty uh, pretty astute sort of summary there. I, I do think that the the Giants maybe uh, were slow to start this weekend uh, in terms of their shooting accuracy. You know, the, there were decent chances in the first period, um, but it seems like we, we just weren't zeroed in just yet. Um, but but like Simon, you know, it, you didn't feel any danger whenever uh, Stadnik put put the Flyers one 0 up. Um, you know, I think the, the the turning point of the game was in the second period. And I've said this in recent weeks, yet again, I think the penalty kill turned the game for us. Obviously, JJ Pikinic, uh tears away and, and on that breakaway and, and beats Owen with a shorthanded goal. Um, but whenever it started to turn against us later in that period, um, Slater Doggett and Ben Lake uh, were in the box within a minute of each other and we had that five on three kill. I think you saw the Giants character there. We really, really dug deep. Not only that, but Pikinich came close to doing it again. Uh, and I think that was the momentum shifter of the game yet again on the penalty kill. Uh, so special teams, again, for me, continue to to be the 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 little secret sauce in, in our game that, that can uh, make the difference at times. By the time it got to the third period, uh, I think we were just uh, a cruising. You know, you've got a five goal period there, uh, a complete onslaught on Shane Owen. Who, to be honest, I, I know we got a bit of stick from from BC and from the crowd, and I understand that's part of home home ice advantage and, and whatever else. But I genuinely still really like Oway. I really like him as a person, and I think he's a really good goalie. Um, that just is on not a very good team. Um, but look, it is what it is, and and, and the Giants by that third period were were just beating a team that they should be comfortably beaten. Um, on Andre Dixon, I mean. Uh, I don't care how many times we get to say it because it, it does. It genuinely means so much. Uh, you know, they, they're silly enough to let me into the media box these days. And uh, mm-hmm. there was not an ounce of professionalism in me whenever I saw him coming off that <laughs> bench. I was on my feet squealing and waving. Uh, delighted to see Dicko get his minutes. And I, I made the point to the coach in, in post game that that's not a sarcastic thing. It's not a, ah, Dicko's coming in. That is someone that if he wasn't on the ice or on the bench, he'd be in the stands watching the Belfast Giants. Dicko was one of us. Dicko was one of the fans. He's friends with most of us at this point, to be fair. He's on first name terms with almost everybody. Uh, and, and to see him get those moments and, and get that time in front of a what was a massive hot crowd as well, sorely, sorely deserved. Uh, you know, you talk, uh, we'll, we'll go on to talk about the, the next game and, and obviously the the uh, the story of the weekend with that late equalizer. But what says is saying there about him giving that extra time to the boys to to circle the net, you know, try and get their 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 finish with pucks in on net on them, uh, and in those kinds of uh, intense goal scramble scenarios. How did the the game on Sunday go to overtime? You know, I'm, 
to me, it's just an indication that Deco is the a, part, a, a large part of the machine in the background that's setting those boys up for success week after week after week. So it was entirely deserved to hear that standing ovation for him on the Friday night, Saturday night, a Kyber Saturday night. Anymore. Saturday, Saturday night, and it was also very good to see Patrick Smith, Smith stomping around again, greeting all the sundry. <laughs> I, 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 I assume I had, to, I had to skip out at the end. It was a very early flight on a very early flight on, on Sunday, but uh, but that you was made, that. you made the most so, of it. The highlights of that game are available thanks to the guys at Belfast Giants TV, and we move on to the game that took place the next night in Nottingham. Actually, getting off the flight uh, in Manchester, I saw a couple of Belfast Giants fans flying into Belfast on their way to on the way to Nottingham. So uh, taking taking that trip down, but we'll go and we'll have to talk about the game that the Giants undertook in the NIC, the last one of the league season uh, in the NIC against the Nottingham Panthers. A three-two shootout in, for the Belfast Giants. The first two goals coming from uh, the Nottingham Panthers, both from uh, Belergion. Uh, Belergion. Belergion. Yep. Yep. That's all right. Uh, both in the first period, no, no, no scoring in the second period. And in the third period, the Belfast Giants came to life. Uh, Scott Conway scoring 48-36. And then with the netminder pulled and six men out, Mark Cooper on the back stick found the back of the net. 59-59.6 on the clock to force overtime. No scoring in overtime and went to shoot out Scott Conway with the winner to make it 3-2 in the Belfast Giants take. A full six points from the NIC. Jackson Whistle on goal, 34 oh. shots against, two goals against. And uh, Kevin Carr, 52 shots against, and uh, two goals against. Your referees were Pavel Hallis and Steve Brown. A very enjoyable game. And, uh, well, Joe, no, do you know what, lads? It doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. <laughs> Davey, what did you think? <laughs> Buenas noches, Chandler. Live from Tenerife. Live from Tenerife. I'm at the Princess Di Bar down on the front and play the last Marcus here. Couldn't leave you talking about the Nottingham Panthers without being a wee bit involved. Just having my Corona booster here. uh, (laughs) Fantastic. All all good, lads. But let's get down to business. Let's get down to this Panthers game, eh? Go on. So give us your take, man, Mr. Mr. McKim. Look at that time. Look at that time. Sensational. <laughs> you in Sam Trapay, mate? I was I did six Neil Russell jaws before I went, you know. <laughs> Twenty minutes see. Twenty minutes a day before I went. Um I'm actually white from the neck down, to be honest. I just had my face like. Um she'd see me, I've got a proper proper country tan. But um listen, when you look at the Panthers game, genuinely, two each brilliant gut check to come back and, and get that last second goal, if you like, to, to take it to the shootout and, and ultimately get the two points. But being quite frank, this game should have been dead and buried. But for Kevin Carr and the Panthers' nets, you know, Giants, multiple, multiple chances down low in the slot. And not that we didn't execute Carr. Carr played a really good game. But I think if we'd have came away from the NIC again with not quite a blowout win, but maybe like 4 or 5 2, I don't think anybody could really complain. I thought we played really well on Sunday night, considering that's like what, six, seven games in, in less than sort of 10 days. So, um, all boats well. When it goes to shootout, it's a bit of a lottery. But again, Scott Conway two weekends in a row with that forehand, backhand roof. Love it. Love to see it. And that that goal we got with a few seconds left. I think Deco, I, I don't know whether he's had the interviews or not yet, but Deco references it as well. They ice the puck because whenever you pull the goalie, as we talked about last week, you get that opportunity for those 200 foot, you know, no risk rail shots. Bar they get it, get it, and they give us an ice. And that clock runs down. That's a wee bit of home field advantage there. Whoever's in that shot clock just doesn't stop it in time. And to be fair, the Giants, as you would expect, come back and do the complaining, get that extra couple of seconds, which was absolutely crucial. Mark Cooper just hanging about the pack post there. It's a whiffy shot that just comes across them. And he just, they had everyone, they had the goalie and five men in between Cooper and the puck. And you just, that's the puck luck we talk about sometimes. Hasn't gone our way this season. When you're when you're good, you get luck. One as Gary Player used to say, says, what was his we quote, you know, good to be lucky, lucky to be good. Or the more I practice, the better I get. The more I practice, the better I get. Mark Cooper goes and stood in that blue paint from September. Maybe not September, October anyway. He's changed his game and he's gone and he's been our blue paint guy. And he's got rich rewards for the hard work that he's put in. I love Coops. Love the work he puts in. Says will tell you about the work he puts in 
on a daily basis in practice, extra practice. And Dicko being a massive part of that. I heard you just talking about Dicko before he came on. Dicko stays in the ice with Cooper and lets him shell shots at him. You know, massive part of the club. Coops coming up with a goal. Conway again and chirping everybody on Sunday. It was absolutely outstanding. Love to see it. Simon, we've went into the NIC you know, twice already. And <clears> both <throat> times were absolutely dominant. We were outpacing them. We were blowing them out. Why was this a much tighter affair? I think that probably we felt a wee bit embarrassed when we, we beat them. Wasn't it five nil the first time we played them, and then seven two at the start of January? So, you know, being outshot, outplayed, outscored um, for you know twice in a row in their own building, I, I'd probably felt a wee bit embarrassed about it. So, you know, they've come out played a bit better. Um, you know, obviously played a bit tighter. They've had a couple of new bodies come in, um, new coach come in, and. You know different ideas, so you know it, it's it's one of those ones where they've had a couple of positive results in the last few weeks. Um, and to be honest, I sort of expected it. I sort of expected them to come out and play a bit tighter because uh, you know we've the first two games we've played there this season. I think we scored within the first minute of both of them. So you know it's us getting a good start was was something that you really wanted to try and do. They scored two goals in what was it 12, 13 seconds. Mm-hmm. Get a bit of luck on their way, but we talk about it. Davy's just mentioned about the puck luck, so you know, you take it when it comes along. Sometimes it goes against you, you just have to suck it up. And I mean, just watching the video here, as I say, I mean, you could throw a blanket over those six players. Um, yeah. just when they can see that's that second goal from Mark Cooper with 0.4 seconds left in the clock. So, you know, it was another. I thought we played really well. I didn't get a chance to watch it at four o'clock. I watched it when I got home, um, probably at about I think it was about half nine. Uh, watched the whole game back again. I thought we were great. I, I thought we played really, really well. I didn't, you know, it, it was one of those you could say on games, you know, again, you see the you see the tweets coming through, oh, you know, we can't play like this all the time. You know, we're going to concede this or we're, no, we're short on bodies. We're doing this, we're doing that. A lot of people don't realise that sometimes you actually play better with just three lines instead of three lines and two guys left over. So you know, we've played better when there's been three guys, three lines continuously the whole way through. Um Yes, it's great having a couple of extra bodies and, and having those on board. But sometimes when you bring somebody in, you can kick the whole mantra off, you know, off kilter to a certain extent. It, sometimes it doesn't work. Be careful what you wish for. You know, you can end up like nodding at the start of the season and having to you know, get rid of a few guys. So we're doing all right. You know, where we are right now, I, I don't think anybody in the organization is going to be unhappy. Um, everybody wants to be on top. I get it. Uh, but I, I don't think there's anything to worry about right now. We're playing well. We've got their taking their chances when they're coming along. We come up with a big win um, with 0.4 seconds, and then getting the, the shootout goal. And Davies just touched on it with Scott Conway celebrating in front of their fans. He's just awesome. And, uh, you know, he's getting one goal closer to the other's 30 goals. I said he'd get it at the start of the season. So two more points, four more points over the weekend. Thanks for turning up. Joe, from a point, Joe, from a point of view, the, the Giants going into tomorrow night's or Wednesday night's game against the uh, the Panthers in the in the in the semi final, to, to to have that comeback and to take those two points vital, and also taking into account that just up the road in Sheffield, that the the Sheffield Steelers were dropping a point to the Cardiff Devils. It's very very easy in sports to throw the head up whenever you've had a bad weekend and whenever you feel like results aren't going your way. Um, but we we said in previous weeks on this show there are so many twists and turns left in this title race uh, before it's going to be over. I have no doubt with five more games to play against the Steelers alone, there will be further twists and turns in this title race. But the Belfast Giants are not out of this. I think having that game specifically, if you would have given me any of our visits to the Motor Point or whatever it's called now, uh, to have before a Challenge Cup semi-final, I would have chosen that one. That does us so much more service than going over there and shellacking them. See, having to show that character and to really battle and to come up against the hot Kevin Carr. And to be honest, Kevin Carr was the difference maker in that game right through into the third period. Um, I, th- I thought the Giants were maybe a little bit shakier at the back than normal, making a few kind of mistakes and, and uh, turnovers being forced in our defensive zone. And whenever we got forward, Carr was just red hot. You know, that that kind of paddle save, diving across the face of goal, um, that, that, you know, you come up against a hot goalie like that and you can feel like the ice is tilting away from you. But to dig in, and, and a phrase that Adam Keith used earlier in the season uh, for the Cardiff game, which obviously ended 1-0 in, in Belfast, uh, he said that he went in after the second period break and he asked the players to invest in that last 20 minutes. Invest in it because it's going to make the difference down the stretch. And I feel like that's what the Belfast Giants did. That's a different team that came out in that third period. And those are boys that understood last period of the weekend, this is a momentum game. Invest in this 20 minutes 
do the hard yards now and uh, and it will pay off not only on on the league table um but but as you roll into wednesday and, and what is a massive cup game against the nottingham Panthers? i'm going to give you more or less the same game same question davy before i let you return to your tenerife holiday you know <laughs> when you when you look at the fact that the giants were able to come back with those two games sorry to those two goals in the third period leading into what was ultimately two points on the board you, we look at the small margins we look at the small margins on on the uh you, over the course of the season, we look at that goal that was scored by uh, Ben Bounds through his own legs and, and crossing the line just right at the death to take those two, those extra points. It is the fine margins. It is the 0.6 or 0.4 on the clock goals that ultimately could lead to ultimate success. This is probably, I'm not going to say for the first time, Adam Keefe's teams always do this, but this is one of the first real blue collar teams. This team has no quit. This team goes to the final horn. Goes. I've seen them two or three, one down, whatever, in games that we have lost. Away to Sheffield, away to Manchester. Games we've lost, still going to that final buzzer to get one goal, to get a point, to get whatever they want to try and get. This team doesn't quit. And as Joel has rightly said, they're going into Wednesday night. It was probably better to have a proper test from the Panthers. It's a bit of a wake-up call because six for six against the Panthers or whatever it is now. It was six out of six points in the NIC, certainly, and uh, would beat them in Belfast. I don't know if it's still to come again. Um, you know, two more, having a two more down the march. Two, two, yeah, the club would only play them once yet. So I, I would give them a good hammer in Belfast. I think it was on the mic with you, says that night. Um, it was good to have a bit of resilience from them because on Wednesday night, doesn't ma- make no mistake, Wednesday night is a huge game for us. People would say the Challenge Cup doesn't matter. Ask Simon Kitchen, Simon Kitchen. And me talked about this last week, or just uh, between ourselves. He would rather win the Challenge Cup, perhaps in the playoffs, because it's so much harder to win. Plus, you get the European spot with it, I think, as well. Same that right? You get yeah. Campbell Cup. Yeah. So you know, it's it's a big, big prize. I love it because you get to hang banners, and that's what hockey's all about. It's about hoisting silver and hanging banners. And do I want to win tomorrow night? You bet your bottom dollar I do, and I bet you every single giant in that dressing room wants to suit up and get out there and get that win. Uh, one more, I know I said one more. One more. What was your what was your reaction to Deco coming in that's on Saturday? Don't like to be condescending, right? And go, ah, oh, it's brilliant to see a local boy. Deco got ti- ice time on Saturday night because he earned it. And mm-hmm. he earns it away from the spotlight. He earns it away from Besco earns his, his ice time, obviously he does his training, but earns his ice time on a Saturday night or a Sunday afternoon, wherever he's playing in those 60 minutes because he is the outstanding goaltender in the league. Jackson Whistle, I would probably say, is the outstanding backup goaltender in the league. And over the last couple of weeks has really proven that when he had when we've been putting a spot with Besco going down, because Besco has had a lot of the load, Whistle's came in and he was exceptional on Sunday night and through the two shootouts, shootouts that we've won over the last few weekends. Dicko, as I said earlier in the piece, is that guy when Besco's done his practice and gone in, when Whistle's done his practice gone in, Dicko's out there taking shots off the helmet, breaking sticks, still cracking up like he was 10 years ago. Dicko is one of the bits of glue that hold this organization together. There isn't enough superlatives to talk about Andrew Dixon. And the softly spoken guy that he is, articulate about the game. Dicko's one of those guys, if you get to listen to his interview later, or make sure you do stay on. When Dicko talks, you listen, because Dicko talks a lot of sense. And he's team first, which what I loved about his interview. Simon obviously had it, and it'll be later on. But everything about it's great to have the ice time, yeah. More important to get the two points. Great to do this, yeah. More important for the two points for the team. He's a team first guy. He's been here, what, 10, 11, 12 years now. And has never, I never will let this organization down. Might be a bit of a fanboy. That's okay. Everybody should be a fanboy of Andrew Dixon. On that, mate, one more. What, 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 what's the weather like out there? Warm? It's. We've had one wet day, which uh, wasn't great, but it's hot today. Would you believe it? Went out sea kayaking a day? No. Boat meringue. Got <laughs> Lovely, man. The, we're out, the Brady we're Bear is built for we've, dry land. We've had uh, a period right. of rain here, too. It's lasted I've about a week, like, but it's been a period of rain. Yeah. Yeah. Period it's not of three rain. different names. Oh, we, uh, that's that's we got Lillian, Lillian, that? Lillian, Rebeer, Lillian Rebeer playing um, pool over there. I came back to the pub I was last in 25 years ago. Went out for a wee look at day to find it. Princess Diana, this one behind me. Which oh, one won? What one? one. No. Which pub? This pub? This pub? What's it called? The Princess Die. I've not oh, said I've that not like five times. I've not no, been there. No, you've not been there. <laughs> no. 
So Busby's, Busby's and Bobby's mate. 1999 was my time in Tenerife. <laughs> Busby's and Bobby's, the Soul Cellar. No, all gone. I think I think I seen the Soul Cellar. It looked like a bit of a dump, like but it, it, it was. Sounds a bit yeah, right yeah. for party. That's yeah, exactly my rule for it. That's right. Anyway, boys, good luck tomorrow night. I'm absolutely. I'll be watching it obviously, and the and the chilies around the corner. I've said they'll put it on the big screen if I give them the uh, the old code for the game. So. There'd be nobody else there. <laughs> it's, 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 it's February. Come on, boys. So, uh, anyway, buenas noches. Good. Good night, Diego, nice Diego. Buenas noches, my good man. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 uh, he, he sent me a message earlier on saying I can't, I can't miss out on this talking about the Nottingham Panthers, can I? So uh, there he is. Cry of have, uh, when he appeared sen- on the screen there, it was buzzing. S- Senor Majimsi, come and, and, and join us. <laughs> the, man. The, uh, <laughs> but um, and, you know, I'll come back to you on this. Is we got more or less the same sort of question asked Joel and and, and Davy. It sort of feeds into this game on Wednesday night against the Nottingham Panthers. This this um the this um semi-final to f- f- how, how do you think the Panthers will feel on the back of the fact that they had a two-goal lead with with a little under what just a little over 10 minutes to go a little under over 10 minutes to go in the game and they end up losing a lot tough um, you know <laughs> but from a from a if it was a Panthers fan if it was a Panthers player as Panthers coach I'd probably feel quite good about it to be honest I mean they did play better there's no doubt about that as better I say you know, we yeah. beat them we played them four times this season. Won three two in a shootout the weekend, five nil, and I think the other two are seven two. So you know, mm-hmm. if you count that up, seven two, fourteen, fourteen four, nineteen four, nineteen six, twenty two six, well twenty one six plus a shootout. You know, that's mm-hmm. what we've scored against them. They should be embarrassed. And I, to be honest, I'm expecting a really, really tough game tomorrow night. I think they're mm-hmm. going to turn up. Cars playing well. We've already talked about it. You know, they've got a couple of new guys in their lineup that's definitely improved them. Uh, Blurs you on scoring goals every week, and and um, you know I I think they could get a real task tomorrow night. I still fancy our chances. I think the boys have got it in the locker to you know to get that uh, push forward. Plus they've got the incentive of having the final in Belfast, um, you know, in in, uh, in March. So you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully we can do it. Hopefully we can get it done in sixty minutes. Because look, we read earlier on that they, they extended the the overtime period and. Yeah. Um, it's going to 10 minutes now instead of five. You don't want to be going for an extra 10 minutes, three on nope. three, uh, when you've got a game actually, two games this weekend one Coventry, one in Belfast against Manchester. Manchester, so yeah. uh, you know, it's going to be tough. Highlights of the game from Panthers TV on YouTube, and you can see the clips, of course, on like the likes of the uh, the official um Elite League uh Twitter account that stuck up that 59 59 goal, which was. Brilliant. <laughs> I, I, I honestly jumped so high off the bloody sofa when that hit the back of the net and then bust my hand off the ceiling. It was probably yeah, I got, just I got told off. Got told off for squealing. The cat disappeared. Like it was, I think, the scenes scenes and limbs all but, over well, uh, any house watching that. That Go goal was scored. Um, well, I watched it here. I think it went in the net at about, um, about five past 11 in my house because I, I knew the score, I knew the result. <laughs> Um, and I still scream. <laughs> yes. Yes. Jasmine, sh- Jasmine shouted down. Jasmine shouted down to me, Dad, you know the score. Shut up. <laughs> 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 no. So I mean, you still like a surprise to you. I hadn't, I hadn't seen, I didn't watch the goals beforehand. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was, I was looking at the clock. I'm not even watching the play, which way it developed. Um, and then I went back and watched the play, obviously. And uh, brilliant to get that little you know, buzzer beater. Absolutely superb. What was that? What was nice from from my point of view? Obviously, I took the both both the kids to the uh, to the game on on Saturday night, and they both absolutely adored it and got really into it. Which, from my point of view, is fabulous. Um, normally, what happens in our house on a Sunday, especially when there's a game on, I'll just basically hide away in the kitchen and put the laptop on and make a bit of dinner or whatever. And uh, and the, today, oh, that Sunday was no different because the kids were knackered from being up at five o'clock to go to the airport. But so we stuck them in front of Encanto for about the fifteenth time. You know. We don't talk about Bruno, and they, uh, but it's uh, great tune, uh, not the best tune in the movie, though. But anyway, so <laughs> they're watching that, and then my, my four year old Russian comes, comes into the kitchen and says, What are you watching, daddy? And then she looks at the screen, she goes, oh, Is that the Belfast Chance? Oh, went, that's all it is. Yeah, she went, Can I watch it too? And she sat down in the kitchen and watched a bit of it with us, and then she heard more of Encanto going on. She went back, but for those like couple of minutes. 
She was she was she was remembering how much she enjoyed herself on Saturday night. So we got another as, one. As I said to you, in the arena, Patty, the force is strong. The force is That's strong, man. Another one hooked. Just keep sprinkling no, it. Good. But hey, let's, uh, before let's we move on, on from that, Patty, uh, mm-hmm. just real real quick, uh, two things to note from that. One, just how hard those boys celebrated that goal. That's a mm. team who wants to win championships in this city. The second thing is. Uh, spirit of 2012 you can't talk about this game without at least mentioning uh, Doug Christiansen's title year 11-12 away double header to the Nottingham Panthers, Panthers. trailing yep. 2-0 coming into the third period three goals in eight minutes game winning goal from well. Nick Kuyper setting up uh, last weekend of the season showdown with the Sheffield Steelers and we know how that went I'm not saying history it. repeats but I'm just saying it's ha- it's happened before I remember very and well that, that was, I think I, I read one of the, the stats from the stats team that was our first shootout victory over the Panthers in 10 years. Wow. Goodness me. Crazy. Crazy. And, and in That's that unreal. time, we had this shootout in the um, in the Challenge Cup semi-final, which we'll not talk about. Yeah. So, <laughs> right, let's bat our heads. Simon got a chance. Simon got a chance earlier on today to pop down to training as the guys prepare for the game against the Nottingham Panthers and uh, had a chance to chat with Jeff Mason, Scott Conway, Andrew Dixon. But first of all, I'll, I'll leave Simon to reduce the first guy. AVFTB player of the month for January comes up with a massive goal with 0.4 seconds to go in the uh, game on Sunday in Nottingham. Oh yeah. No big deal, is it? Not a big deal, no. No, it was exciting. Uh, luckily that puck squirted out to me. I owed Kevin Carr there one because he uh, robbed me in the first, uh, probably the best save uh, that's been made against me ever. So uh, had to get him back and uh, extremely excited we could uh squeak out the two points in that at that one and uh get some momentum going into wednesday a uh, big game wednesday night um the uh, nottingham panthers come in here they've got a couple of new players as i say you're good friends with, with kevin carr as well but you know the friendship doesn't uh, <laughs> go well when you're out on the ice no not at all yeah they uh they're definitely a different team with uh, their coaching changes there uh they play a lot more aggressive and stuff so uh, we'll expect their best, and uh, we'll bring ours, and the fans will be roaring, and uh, we'll get off to a good start and uh, continue that momentum throughout the game. Four points of the weekend, five uh, against two, probably two points against five, two points against the Nottingham Panthers. Let's just keep on uh, keep on rolling. Keep on rolling, yeah. we got to keep uh, chipping away at that uh, Sheffield lead at the top of the, uh, this at the table there. So uh, just keep chipping away, and then control what we can control, and we do play them five times, so uh, it's a good thing coming down the stretch. Thanks very much, Coops. No problem, Kitsy. Dicko, um, 7 1 victory over the five stars on Saturday night. Uh, getting some well deserved ice time. It's always good to get the Pooler Challenge jersey on and uh, and get on the ice. And, and uh, I'm sure the boys all showed appreciation off the ice, but the fans showed it when you come on as well. I certainly did, yeah. It was, um, it was a very special moment for me, actually. It was, it was pretty loud. Um, often I'm not really able to hear what's going on down there, but I certainly heard that one. It was. It was, uh, it was great, um, and thanks for all the support, actually. Um, and big thank you to the boys as well. They've done a great job. They really didn't give up much um, for me. But more importantly is the two points. You know, Whatever happens to me is second to what happens for the team. Um, and then obviously we went into Sunday, had a big game there as well. Um, so all in all, very good weekend, personally, and more importantly for the team. Um, Saturday's game, uh, you come in with just under 10 minutes to go. Want to talk us through your first save? Uh, well, it was kind of like a little bit of a fluter, wasn't it? And I was like, so I'm going to glove it. And then I was like, let's go to Lou. <laughs> so, so I'm going to kick it. <laughs> so, so yeah, I kicked it into the corner, thankfully. But um, yeah. You kept it out, mate. You kept it out. As long as it doesn't go in. Fair. But let's, let's talk about one of the biggest controversies in sports stats. Who got credited for the goal against? Mm-hmm. Jackson Whistle. I don't know. I didn't oh, I celebrate. Went down against me. Yeah. Did it? No, I, but you know what? I'll take it. So. But uh, um, I don't know. I have to speak to David Mason yeah, about yeah. that. It went down against me. Yeah. Stats, so man. I'm giving, I'm giving, giving us a little bit of chip about it. So. Of course. Um, talk us through the game on Saturday, Sunday. Um, sitting watching that from the bench, and obviously, you know, uh, we we seen the celebration from Mark Cooper. We yeah. didn't see what was happening on the bench, but no point four seconds ago. Oh, yeah. Well, we were all jumping up and down and fist pumping and crazy. I mean. That third period, you know, they come out well. They're a little bit of a changed team since we've, you know, had a couple of good results against them. Played well. Um, battle of the whistles again. Dave Whistle obviously on their bench, so West came in done a hell of a job for us. Thought he was fantastic. Um, they took that, you know, it was like a minute or two when they got like that two goal lead, but we sort of turned it around after the second period, and, and I thought that we played very well in the third, and 
you know, 0.2 seconds left or whatever it was. And on the play before that, you know, the play stopped and the clock continued and we had to get those two seconds back. So you could hear, hear the boys shouting, two seconds, two seconds. So we got those two seconds put back in the clock and thank goodness because we needed them. Adam, you got the over here. Just join in here. You may as well do. You got the, the opportunity to join. I let Dick get some nice time on, on Saturday. Um, I'm sure we're just chatting about the, the, um, the reception that he got from the players. But I mean, he, I think he underestimates himself when what, how much of an impact he is in this team. He's certainly gotten better since I stopped sniping on him in practice. I mean, he's really helped out his confidence there the last, what, four years? So, um, yeah, since I stopped scoring on him, he's certainly gotten a lot better. And the, the, obviously the weekend, um, getting the ice time on Saturday night at home with a 7-1 victory over the uh, Fife Flowers. And he was telling me that the goal's going against him. What's that all about? I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's that. So maybe, maybe it's the second biggest stat fraud ever. You took your playoff stats going from that third place that's game. Fair, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. You took, took those four points. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Right, it's speaking to the weekend. Cheers, sir. Saturday night, uh, two points against the Five Flyers, seven one victory. Sunday night, two points against the Nottingham Panthers, but you left it late. Uh, but nothing like a four point weekend. Yeah, I mean, it's a hockey game. Um, you're gonna score late, you're gonna score early, and uh, I think we just stuck with it uh, um, throughout the game. Um, we turned it up in the third period, and um, we got lucky with uh, 0.4 seconds left. So. Uh, a really big game again going in there. Was it a, a slow start from us or was it a good start from the Panthers? Uh, I, I just think they were ready for us this time. Um, we came in their building twice now and kind of gave it to them a little bit. So um, I think they're expecting to come out and uh, expecting us to come out and give it to them. So um, they were just ready to, ready for us, I think. And um, we kind of started a little slow and it doesn't matter how you start if, uh, if we win the game. So. Uh, you're a wee Sally. You do enjoy a wee uh, shootout Sally, don't you? I just love getting the fans going a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go to Wednesday night. Uh, the Panthers are back in Belfast. Uh, one game, Challenge Cup semi-final with an option uh, with the win to hold the final here in Belfast. That's a big, a big hook there that you want to get on to. Yeah, I mean, anytime you have a home ice advantage, it's massive, right? Especially playing in front of it. Our fans, you know, building this size as loud as it can get. Um, it's just going to be a great atmosphere, I think. Um, we got We just got to focus on next game here, though, and and uh, give it to Nottingham here. They've got a couple of new players on board, um, but the boys already picked up this morning up for the weekend. Yeah, um, we felt pretty good today. Um, they do have some new players. They also got a new coach. Um, this, this guy's dad right here. Um, but at the end of the day, young whistle beat old whistle last game, and it's going to happen this game too. Miss um, another four-point weekend. Um, great performance on Saturday uh, against the Five Flyers at home with a seven-one victory after going the one goal down. Really good fight back. Um, and uh, listen to Adam at the end of the, the game itself. He was really happy. What's your review on the on the fight game? Yeah, I think we played really well. Obviously, uh, we had some success. Uh, it was great to see. Uh, it was great to see Andy be able to get in. Um, did the things we needed to do. And uh, overall, I thought it was a really good effort uh, as a whole from the team. Um, you know, certainly coming off the, uh, the shootout victory against them the, the previous game, I think we, we did our, you know, guys came out, took care of business and got the victory. Sunday's game, uh, a little bit tighter. Um, we've had the Nottingham Panthers number so far this season, uh, but they got off to a good start, got those two quick goals. Uh, again, good fight back from the boys. Yeah, I think overall we weren't, we weren't that disappointed with how we played in the first two periods. I thought we were maybe just a little bit slow in some areas um, and you know kind of the build-up of a lot of games and uh, in a short period of time and then looking ahead to Wednesday and uh, statistically looking back on the game I thought we were you, you know we carried possession we, we dominated most of the play obviously when you give up two goals in 12 seconds it, it kind of gets you on your heels a little bit but uh, they really did a good job of, of coming back and um, you know <laughs> Fight until the till the very last second there to uh, to uh, you know tie it up and to get come out of there with two points with you know being down that late is certainly a uh, a massive accomplishment massive credit to the guys and, and really big in the, in the run in here. Um, on the bench we have seen what happened on the ice. The boys were the six guys that were on the ice were very very pleased. Um, were actually on the bench this year. Yeah, it was. Uh, boys were excited. The first thing that caught my eye was uh, was Dicko had jumped up and. 
he might have hit me or something, but uh, the boys were, uh, they were certainly excited. I don't know that people realized how little time was left because you're watching the play, you don't, you, you know, you maybe don't see the clock ticking right down to the butt end there. So, uh, no, it was obviously pleased to, uh, to come out with the two points. We'll move our attention now to the Challenge Cup um, semi final tomorrow night again against the Nottingham Panthers. They're a different team, they've got a few new guys in. Um, what was the way, or your view on the way they played at the weekend? I thought that they played hard. They certainly they made some changes. Obviously, uh, not only just on the ice but behind the bench, and uh, maybe have a little different, a uh, little different philosophy, a little different look. And I thought they played hard um, and, and competed. Uh, I, I think their goalie right now is is feeling feeling pretty confident, and, and so we got to make sure that we get traffic to the net, make him work to see pucks. Um, but uh, you know, I think they're they're an improved team from the team that we'd seen earlier in the year. Uh, but I still am confident that if we come out, we play our game and, and stick to our game plan, that that we should uh, be successful. Cheers, miss. Big thanks to the guys and a few cameos in there from. Uh, Jason Ellery and uh, Adam Keefe as well coming in for a bit of a and um, I know there was a there was a first take on the Scott Conway interview. If we clean it up, maybe we'll stick it out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Good but yep, yeah, thanks to the lads and thanks to Simon for popping down the train and just sort that out. Right, time for the fan agenda brought to you by our good friends at Belfast Giants TV. And this week we're joined by a man who, when we're discussing you know things like Player of the Month or just general play, this man's name comes up time and time again as one of the outstanding players, not just in the Belfast Giants but of the Elite Ice Hockey League. We're delighted to be joined by Griffin Reinhardt. How are you doing, Griff? Uh, yeah, good. Thanks for having me on. Uh, hey, good to have you, but good to have you. Let's let's just I want to start just by talking about Sunday night and the, and that game at the NIC and regards to the reaction from the guys and, and the fight back and, and, and to get that goal so late and turn it into two points. What does that mean to you guys in the room? Um yeah, I mean it's huge. Um, you know, it's almost like a little sense of a relief, you know. It's such a tight race right now in the league standings. Um, every point matters. Um, you know, it seems like the other top teams are not really dropping many games. So, uh, you know, whether we got one one point or two uh, two points that night, um, every point matters towards the end. So it was, uh, it was a good feeling. Um, you know, we had a long weekend. Uh, so to come up with two points and four points in the weekend was huge. Obviously, that one goal behind going into the dying minute, and you know the the, the age old hockey tactic of pulling the goalkeeper and, and, and trying not to try not to panic and trying to get those those pucks on net. How difficult is it, or is it just a frantic just keep go go go? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, we we had the same kind of thing in Fife. Obviously, it wasn't with 0. 0.4 seconds, but you know we're comfortable. We have a lot of guys that can score on this team that can prov provide offense and. You know, it takes 60 full minutes to win a hockey game. And, um, you know, it's just evident in the last couple of games that we've needed all 60 minutes to uh, put it to extra time and get the win. Griff, as the seasons went on and where we are right now, obviously, you know, we've, we've got a lot of home games left before the end of the season. I think it's I think it's seven away and 13 at home or 14 at home. Um, how important is going down the stretch and getting that home support um, and obviously, you know, building a bit of momentum uh, coming down the stretch for you and your teammates. Um, yeah, I mean, it's big. Like you said, having a bunch of home games is a big advantage. Um, you know, it can be tough traveling, flying out that day or taking a ferry and then playing that night. Um, and it's going to get more tiring down the stretch. And, you know, the more home games you have, the more energy you can conserve. And um, I'm not sure how many other teams have compared to us exactly, but um, we're always comfortable playing at home. Um, we think we play well there. Um, fans give us good support. Um, so it's a, it's a good feeling going down the stretch here in the last two months. I know, obviously, with, uh, you know, you've, you've had the experience of playing the NHL. You've had the experience of playing the KHL Germany. Um, but I don't think you've ever experienced traveling on a ferry to a game. Um, <laughs> have you got used to that now? Because, you know, it's, it's I think it's coming to an end. I think we've only got one or maybe two more trips in, on the, the Stanline Ferry. But is it, have you got used to that experience yet? Um, I think you can get used to it. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy ever, um, but I mean, it's, <laughs> the same, it's the same for everybody. Um, you know, teams do that coming to play us. Um, so it's a, it's a hard league to win in. And I think it takes a little bit of time for, there's a lot of new guys. It's, it's weird format coming in. They're not having a playoffs um, like you traditionally do in North America or other parts of Europe. Um, so every game really matters. And I think as the season started going on and even though you're told, at the start, every point matters. Um, you really start to get the feeling that everybody's started to grasp that, and and uh, every game you're treating like a playoff game now. 
I just wanted to actually pick up on that, Griff, if that's okay. You, you're obviously someone who's has played all over the world. You know, you've been in the NHL. You've played a lot of games in the AHL. Uh, and it says, says you're with the Red Star in the KHL and, and with the Roosters in the Dell. Uh, do you actually like that league format? It's obviously, I, I think anyway, uh, in any league that I'm, I'm aware of, it's it's unique to the UK. It's it's a lot more in line with with kind of how soccer football leagues w- would would work out. Um, what what are your thoughts? Does it Jonathan for you in the Dan Daly? Uh, the coach was on a, a couple of weeks ago talking about how you know you're on a long road stretch in the A or in the coast or whatever. You know if you're playing four games in a week or whatever, it, it's kind of an unwritten rule that if you drop that fourth, man, it's all right. Um, do, do you actually enjoy that kind of consistent pressure of, of every game feeling like playoff hockey? Um, yeah, I mean, I think now it's starting to feel like that more, um, especially as the race is tightening up and you see other teams aren't dropping points. Um, I mean, whether I, I like the format better or not, I don't know. I mean, I think the team that wins it is going to say, yeah, it's the best format. It's the hardest to win. And <laughs> yeah. I think you're going to say, well, in a playoff series, I could have beat that team. Um, you know, I haven't been here yet before. Um, I mean, I think it's it's a fair way to do it. Um, every league can, you know, come up with their own format. Um, we all knew the set of rules at the start of the year, and you just have to go by that. And you've obviously been in, in Northern Ireland for, goodness, what are we, month five now probably of the season, uh, and you came here from that spell in Europe. Uh, what What's your impression now that you're settled in Belfast as a city uh, of the Elite League as a whole compared to, obviously we're talking about, you know, high-level leagues in Europe and, and stuff, um, but but what's your impression of, of the place now that you're settled, of the team, of the hockey, and of the place itself compared to what you thought you were coming into? Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, I haven't, I've never been to Belfast before Northern Ireland. Um, so I feel like I'm used to it now. Um, you know, I love the city. Um, it hasn't rained as much as I've heard maybe, but <laughs> Vancouver, so I it's have a lot. Uh, I am used to my fair share of rain. Um, so I've acclimated pretty well. Um, you know, I've kept pretty busy with school too. I'm doing school full time. Um, and then in terms of the hockey, I mean, it's good. You get a lot of these players that, you know, growing up there that, top end uh, talent in their leagues they play junior they get a lot of points they get points in whatever league they're in um and you know when you get to professional level level no matter what the quality you're always going to have guys fighting for a job and fighting for the next paycheck and they're going to work hard and when you work hard it's uh it's hard to play against if you're not working hard so um i've been pretty impressed with the quality and it's a lot of fun playing here I'm going to go. We always we always ask uh, the guys on Twitter to throw a few questions our way to ask you, and uh, I've got two here which are kind of kind of <clears throat> similar. Uh, one from Dylan Taki. He says, "What's it like to play with guys like Connor McDavid and Morgan Riley?" And then you got Jayla who asks, "What's it like to play alongside Cam Knight?" These are two very similar questions. So, <laughs> um, let, 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 I'll let you take them as you as you see fit. All right. Well, luckily I can say that I've never played against. Connor McDavid. Um, you know, I played with him in the World Juniors one year and played with him in Edmonton for a bit. Um, he's he can he can do everything. Like the hype is real. Uh, definitely, I think the best player in the world, the most skilled. He's able to do everything at the highest pace, and you know he can stick handle at that pace. He he can find you and find guys where you have no idea where anybody else is. Um, and he has that other gear where you think he's going full speed. He's coming down on you in practice, and then he has that extra stride and it looks effortless. So you don't even realize how fast he's going until he's around you. Um, you know, I, I knew Morgan growing up with him, played with him uh, in minor hockey a lot, see him in the summers. Um, I, I love Morgan. Obviously, he's had a tremendous career in Toronto, um, great player. And then Cam, I've you know, played with him now for the pretty much most of my games here. Um, you know, it, it's a nice pairing. We actually have a righty and a lefty, which helps as well. And, you know, I feel like we've connected well. I, I feel confident we're out there. I feel like we uh, – do a good good job playing in the offensive zone, um, you know, um, getting in the extra time uh, or six six on fives, uh, you know, power plays. We can rotate units. Um, I feel like we're good complements for each other. The Teal Trooper points out that you come out, you come from quite uh, quite quite the stock when it comes to the hockey, you know, NHL hockey as well. You know, you've got you new. Know, I saw your your brother Sam play in Germany. You got Max, of course, your dad played in Canucks. You know, what sort of influence he says do they have in your career? Um, I, a lot, but I get asked this a lot, like, what's it like having a family that's, you know, been around hockey and I'm like, mm-hmm. it just feels like it's a family to me, like a fam- like your family. It's all I've known growing up. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool getting to lean on, uh, you know, your dad growing up, who's been through the things that you're trying to get to, 
um, accomplish what you were trying to accomplish. And, you know, obviously Sam's having the most successful career and it's great to see him. Um, but when we're around each other, it's not a lot of talk about hockey. Um, you know, we we're around it so much at the rank. We're around it so much uh, with our teammates. It's more just about having fun as a family when we're away from the rank. Uh, one more from Twitter. Alan Brett says, if you weren't a pro hockey player, what profession do you think you'd have found yourself in? <laughs> That's a hard one. I mean, I'm, I'm studying my uh, MBA right now. So uh, hopefully in uh, some sort of business. Um, what that is yet, I couldn't tell you. Um, I guess the reason why I'm going to school right now is to figure out what I like and, and prepare myself for afterwards. It's overrated, Mitt. Stay away from desks as long as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Don't recommend it. <laughs> I, I'm going to flip it around a wee bit. Calm, or sorry, not calm. You've got me talking <coughs> calm right now. Uh, Griff, you've got, you know, you, obviously you talked about playing with, with Connor McDavid and Morgan Reilly and all of them are really, really top players. With your junior career, with your with even the you know playing right the whole way through with the, the Canada World Juniors, who's the best player you've ever played with who didn't make the show? Oh, that's a good question. Like that's never here all week. one game. Never played a game in the NHL. Oh, that's a good question. You should have asked me to think of this today. So <laughs> I'll tell you what, have, have, a, have a think about it now. Joel will ask you another question. Have a think about it, and we'll come back to that at the end. Okay. Uh, Paddy, I, I'm sorry. I know that uh, you're probably sitting on this one wanting to ask it, but there's been a fantastic Twitter question that's come in uh, just shortly before we commenced our recording tonight, and you're smiling think, like you know which I, one it is. I think I know which one is it, that <laughs> yeah. one there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Griff, Ann Phillipson asks, Griffin, why did you miss my guest lecture in your EMBA last week? <laughs> Sorry, who asked that? Uh, Anne Phillipson asks why you missed her guest lecture in your EMBA last week. <laughs> so would you would you like to tell teacher uh, what happened there? Yeah, I think I actually got excused for that one. Uh, I, was, I was a little I was a little bit sick, and um, you know it wasn't COVID, but. I didn't want to uh, risk it uh, in case it was a false, uh, false negative, and uh, put anybody else in danger. Guy. But uh, you know what? I had I had Mark uh, Mark Cooper was there and uh, told me about it, so it was great. So next one, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> how difficult is that? How difficult is that balance with regards to the the, the 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 schooling while also trying to hold down a professional hockey career? Um, you know what? You in the last eight years or whatever, seven years of being pro, or even going into junior, another four years. There's so much downtime in hockey. Um, you know, there's only so many TV shows you can watch. And to be honest, I wish I started something earlier, whether it was a habit like, you know, reading more often or uh, doing a couple courses online. Um, so it, it's definitely busy, it, you know, getting into the school life, um, sitting in class again for six hours a day, a couple of days a week. Um, it was a bit of an adjustment, but it, it, it takes uh, it takes you away from the game for a little bit. You're not thinking about it all the time gives you something to do productive um and i'm enjoying it though i'm having a lot of fun doing it i think we're more or less wrapped up did you have what you think about <laughs> who's the best player you've never oh made the nhl that you played with he's not he's not um, letting it go man yeah god i sure i've been on so many teams i'm just trying to think of yeah of some players from the ahl but a lot of those good players that i'd be thinking of have played like a game in uh yeah in the NHL. Um, I don't know. I'd probably have to say a, it. I don't know a specific player, but the position is probably a goalie. There's so many good goalies out there that you think, okay, they're going to the yeah. NHL and there's just not enough jobs for them to, to crack it. But yeah, there's definitely some good goalies out there that, uh, that that's interesting because um, it brings me back. So I'm, I'm just going to push a little bit more because it, 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 it brings me back to a question I've asked some of you guys when we've come on, the guys who have played quite extensively in the AHL, about how difficult is it to play in the AHL? Because it seems like it's a league where your ultimate aspiration is to go up, but you're also trying not to go down to the coast. So is your is your mind on the game and being successful in the game with your team when you're probably in competition with the guys next to you to try to get that that step up into the show? Um. Yeah, I guess I've noticed like the difference in when you're in the AHL, from my experience anyway, most of the guys there weren't back and forth in the East Coast. It was, you know, either AHL or NHL. So it's a weird dynamic where everybody thinks that they're getting uh, the short end of the stick and they should be in the NHL or somebody gets called up and 
They're like, oh, I'm playing better, but this is really what the NHL team needs. And, you know, everybody's trying to fight for that spot and they're competing with each other and the dynamics can sometimes be uh, off a little bit. But when you're over here in the in this league, you know, there's no up or down. You're on the contract, um, at least on our team anyway. There's been nobody that's been uh, released from their contracts. Everybody feels safe. Um, so there's that less pressure um, over here for sure. And it's just, uh, the it, you can see it in the atmosphere. You know, everybody gets along with everybody. No one's competing and there's no uh, hard feelings. Griff, I just want to finish off. Um, it's something that I've, 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 taught, I've wondered before. You, you got to play in, in China, uh, the KHL. What was that experience like, especially, you know, going into, well, going into a non-English speaking country? I don't know many guys that, that played with you. I mean, I know, I know that Brandon McGee played up at least part of that season with you. He's, he's at Fife now, but, you know, what's it like going to the experience at different culture, different, um, you know, obviously different part of the world for you. And, and then um, if I'm wrong with this, you can point, point me out, but that there's not the season that COVID started and you needed to obviously get out of there as quickly as possible as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was a bit of a, a shock to me not going to the KHL. Luckily, everybody on that team, you're allowed more imports. It was English speaking. Coaches spoke English, so that wasn't too hard. Um, living in China, uh, I actually lived at a at a hotel, um, so it wasn't too bad. You know, I could get I could get a good meal. People spoke English, but in the streets, getting taxis and stuff, there's no nobody really speaks English in Beijing. Um, you have to be careful about drinking the water from the top, you know, brushing your teeth, you have to use a water bottle. Um, and there's just some things you need to get used to, but it was a good experience. Um, I'm happy I went and did it. Um, it was the year that we had COVID, but we started a month long road trip at the end of January in, in Russia and I got hurt the month. first game. So I went home um, and then we were told that we weren't going back to China. So I had the hotel just pack everything up for me and send it home. Um, the only thing I didn't get was my hockey gear never made it home. So I had to go buy all new hockey gear from a hockey shop in wow. Vancouver, unfortunately. And I didn't realize how expensive hockey gear was until uh, <laughs> 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 try down stuff in Belfast. <laughs> it is expensive, believe you me. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Well, listen, we're gonna we're gonna let you go because obviously that we appreciate we got so many questions from Twitter because I really, 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 really popular in regards to the amount of questions we got on Twitter. But obviously we got the game on Wednesday night tomorrow night and that uh, was the semi-final. Before we let you go, you know, what are your thoughts with regards to we had that game that win on Sunday? We've got the Nottingham Panthers coming in on Wednesday night. What are you expecting tomorrow? Um, similar to last game, it's gonna be a, a fight to the finish. Um, you know. They, they proved to themselves that they can play with us. Um, you know, the first couple of games that we played there, it wasn't really that close. Um, they made some new additions. So we're expecting a good fight uh, from them like they uh, showed us last game. Um, you know, we got to come out to a better start. And and I think we've been pretty good at that at home. And if we uh, if we play the way we can and we're capable of, um, I think we'll have success. But again, you know, in the one-off series, it's anything can happen. Fabulous. Well, listen, mate, thank you very much for joining us and uh, and good luck ne- good luck on Wednesday night. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Griff. Thanks, Griff. Cheers, Paul. Top notch from, from Griffin Reinhardt. Big thanks to him for joining us here in A View from the Bridge. Really, really enjoyed that. Um, and thanks to everybody who sent in questions. We've got so many questions there, but we, you know, when we're flying through it, there's only something <clears> we can <throat> ask. But thank you to everybody who sent questions through. Joel, news time. Yes, Paddy, uh, my highlight of the show this week is teacher tweeting in the Ask Why You Missed class. That's yeah, fantastic. That was quite, that was quite, that was quite good. That. And, and I have to admit, that we, knew, we knew he was sick because he was due to come on with us last Tuesday night. He was. And he, he was. He was, 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 Tuesday, so he was sick. Right. He was. That's yeah. true. Uh, anyway, uh, this past week in the Premier Sports Elite League, uh, a busy Wednesday saw the Nottingham Panthers defeat the Manchester Storm 4-2 at the Motor Point. I still can't get used to calling it the Motor Point. That's Sheffield in my head. Um, and elsewhere, two extremely interesting results in the title race as the Cardiff Devils fell 3-2 to the Dundee Stars at the DIA and the Glasgow clan took a 5-3 victory over the Sheffield Steelers in Brayhead. On Saturday, while your Giants were hammering Fife at the SSE, the Steelers travelled to Aldringham to take their feelings out on the Manchester Storm, defeating them 7-2. Now, as you probably saw that game was halted in the third period uh, due to a medical emergency in the stands but the storm tweeted later in the evening to confirm a fan did fall ill at the rink and was okay and didn't need immediate hospital treatment so that fan ended up going home which is the the best possible outcome for all involved just uh, briefly, just briefly that, so just yeah briefly yeah sure before we move on on that game if you get the chance have a look at sheffield's seventh goal 
Sheffield's seventh goal in that game, where I think it's um, Dallas Earhart just basically tries to drag it back into his own zone, totally falls over in the ball, in yeah. the, the back of the net. It's comical. Yeah. Seventh goal. You, Sorry, Joe. You, you, were, you were kind enough to drop that into the group chat earlier today, and it, it did brighten up. Big thanks afternoon. to Alex for sending uh, that. <laughs> Cardiff also bounced back with a 6-2 win over the Guildford Flames at Ice Arena Wales uh, the clan kept it rolling with another 5 goal victory this time downing the stars 5-2 at home and Robbie, Robbie I, I also struggle with his name I, I, I want to say Bergeron uh, Belageron Belageron's 30th minute marker Sam, the Sam's got to set tomorrow night so <laughs> big rap I'm okay with uh, saying it <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're on the big box mate uh, that was the only goal of the game as the Panthers squeaked past the Blaze 1-0 at the Sky Dome on Sunday another night of twists and turns as your Belfast Giants pulled off that sensational comeback win in Nottingham similarly Cardiff's 58th minute equaliser sent their game in Sheffield to overtime with the, the Devils eventually winning the shootout uh, Trevor Cox with both the equaliser and the winning pen shot in that game elsewhere the Guildford Flames recorded an 8-2 victory over the Glasgow clan at the Spectrum would you? I wrote this earlier. I was I was just reading it like uh, like Anchorman there. Would you eat to see? Uh, the Coventry Blaze <laughs> took two points from Kirkcaldy. Did don't laugh. I don't deserve it. Defeating the Five Flyers three two, and the Dundee Stars capped off a miserable week for the Manchester Storm, handing them their third defeat with a six three win at the Drizzle Dome. Do we have standings, Paddy? We if, do uh, have standings, Joel. Roll we'll through them real quick. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anybody after this weekend's action that uh, it's getting spicy at the top of the table, boys. Just three points separate the top three teams as a thrilling three-horse race shows no signs of stopping. Uh, the thing to keep your eye on at this point, um, as we've covered before, is the disparity in the number of games played here. That that could end up really changing things up. The Sheffield Steelers have held on to first place with 58 points from 35 games. Hot on their heels now, only sitting two points behind are your Belfast Giants with 56 from 36. One more game played. And in third, the Cardiff Devils have 55 points for their 39 games. They've played four more than Sheffield and three more than Belfast, which is a, a you know can be seen as a, as a disadvantage that you've got those games clocked already. Um, the Nottingham Panthers are on a wee bit of an island in fourth for now with 38 points from 36 games played. Guildford trail by six in fifth place with 32 points from 35. And at the foot of the table, the fight for playoff contention is just as tight. Um, it's a really in entertaining uh, league this season in general, a lot going on. Um, the only problem is it's funny if you're in neutral and it's uh, anxiety and just and if you're not, and uh, few of us are in neutral. Uh, the three points separating six and ninth, but again, take note of those games played. Coventry and Glasgow are sixth and seventh on 30 points, with the Blaze having played 31 to the Clans 33. The Dundee Stars are in that golden eight spot for playoff contention with 29 points from 33. <clears throat> The Storm have played 36 and sit ninth with 27 points. And the Five Flyers are trailing in the distance at the foot of the table with just 20 points from 34 games played. Um, if we take a look at some other news from around the league, uh, unfortunately, well, I mean, unfortunately, uh, I have to bring it up again. There's been a bit more fallout from uh, what I'm now calling announcer gate in Coventry this past week as uh, Dops announced a fine on the Coventry Blaze for, quote, the conduct of off-ice staff. Dops said the actions during Sunday's game brought the game into disrepute and will not be tolerated tolerated at any arena in the Premier Sports Elite League. Uh, further, higher fines will be imposed on any club if such such actions are repeated in future. Further issues arising from the game have been dealt with internally by the Elite League and no further comment will be made. There was also a joint statement issued by the EIHL, IHUK, the English Ice Hockey Association and Scottish Ice Hockey um, around abusive officials. It said, in recent months there have been cases of abuse at all levels of the game and this is totally unacceptable, whether it be at the rink, online, via social media, any cases of abuse will be taken very seriously. Seriously, uh, individual clubs have the power to ban offenders from the rink and cases can be reported to the police. Um, it goes on to say that, that uh, officials, players, staff are the, the lifeblood of our sport and uh, governing bodies and leagues in the UK are united in stamping out all forms of abuse. I don't know if we want to go into this one uh, any further and, and certainly it hasn't been a great look for the league. Um, I, I tweeted during the week just with, uh, with Ethan and the McLean family doing the rounds and having those special moments around the ranks and just a reminder that those special moments are happening so much more than, than these kind of negative ones. Um, but, but Paddy, do you reckon that that's a, a proportionate response from the league and, and, and the, the right response? Correct response. I think there's yeah. no doubt about that. I know Simon's having a smile because I had a bit of fun over the weekend with the said individual, uh, but uh, who's quite a sensitive soul for somebody who's very proud of his own career. Um, 
He's uh, um, as he should be, of course. But uh, yes, I, he blocked me because he didn't like the fact that I was having a go at him. But uh, yeah, but yeah, absolutely the correct decision from the from the elite league. As you know, speaking to a couple of guys and a couple of guys involved in announcing, and each one has said, you know, had they done the same thing, they would expect to be fired. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's you know, it's it's not the done thing. The league have re- uh, reacted in the right way. You know, obviously there's the issue with with, with Stefan Hogarth. And, uh, and and stuff around that, and you know, I don't agree with what he put down, and I don't agree with what he put on Twitter, and and maybe that's yeah. something that you know, he has to deal with, and he has to be spoken to. But you know, the the fact is that without these officials, there is no game, and we can't have uh, we can't have announcers in rinks having pops at the officials. Definitely not. And the ad says, or have you heard enough of this? Saying nothing. Saying that, <laughs> technically, technically, I, technically, I'm an announcer on, on the dance webcast, so I don't want to, you know, put my foot on it. But what Patty said is 100 right. You know, it's at the end of the day, fans can have a go at the official. You know, 99.999 percent of the time, it's all about a banter. Um, and you know, I, I did a deal. Do you know what? I, I did a deal or night. I did. Um, Andy Dalton. Um, he gave a slash and penalty to Slater Dog. I, I, I said it immediately. I said, play, come on, that, that is not a penalty. Catch yourself on. on the, I, I said that on, on the webcast. And when I seen the replay, he got it right. He got it absolutely right. And then, of course, Andy watches all his games back. And he sent me a message going, <laughs> you did you just that. have a go at me? And then the next message was, oh, yeah, you did have a go at me, but you apologize for it. So I was <laughs> right and you were wrong. Um, <laughs> look, again, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm ultimately what. Oh, where that was, that was right down to the Zamboni Gate. I was probably, what, 240, 250 feet away, elevated up at the, the highest point in the, that you can watch the game as well. On these 15 feet, 20 feet away from it, it's right in front of them. The officials have a better view than any of us. Yes, they're going to miss it. They're, they're going to miss calls, absolutely. Yeah. And the games on, on Saturday night, the, the, the game which we watched on Saturday night at Belfast, I thought the officials did really well again. You know, again, what happened last week in, in Coventry is absolutely unacceptable. The league have drawn a line under it. They're not saying anything else about it. And I think that's the right thing to do. Um, yes. And with regards to, I don't even know a guy's name. I have no idea. Uh, but with regards to him, you know, having a go at the official, but putting the official's jer- jersey on, he needs to grow up, catch himself on. You know, would he do it at Coventry City? Would he do it at the Wasps? Absolutely not. So don't do it at Coventry, please. Um, so at the end of the day, company players have got a fine out of it. You know, I'm sure that I don't know much it is and no idea how much they, you know, they're going to basically pay for the fine. I don't think they'll expect um, your man to pay for it. But the bottom line is you can't do that to officials. Yes, the fans can have a bit of a go, um, not be happy with a call. Say you don't know what you're doing. I get that. Um, but to have a go at a, per, at a personal agenda to, to, against an official is absolutely bang out of order. Um, and as I said, I reached out to Stefan Hogarth last week. Um, and uh, it was great to see him back on the ice again at the weekend. Um, so Correct. Uh, I hope he's doing here, okay. Here. Here, here. And fingers fingers crossed that's the last of that and we can get back to the hockey and uh, an, an unbelievable run-in. Uh, Paddy, just a couple of notes on the Challenge Cup uh, before we wrap news. Uh, earlier today, the EIHL announced changes to the format of overtime in tomorrow night's Challenge Cup semifinals. Um, this is a result of these fixtures being changed to one-shot knockout games as opposed to the originally planned two-legged aggregate series. So instead of five minutes of three-on-three overtime, if a game ends tied after regulation, it will now go to 10 minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me, 10 minutes of three-on-three OT. Um, this brings it into line with the rules for the playoffs semi-finals which are also single knockout games and as we alluded to earlier the team with the highest seeding from the group stage will have the option of hosting the final and um, your Belfast Giants were top seeds followed by Sheffield Cardiff and Nottingham in that order which long story short means if we take care of the Nottingham Panthers tomorrow at the SSE or today whenever you're whenever you'll be listening to this we earn the option to have the final at the SSE arena and um, no announcement on the date of the final yet the league says they'll update fans when we know the finalists and the venue uh, that's your news Patrick Smith Thank you very much, Joel Neal. Uh, right, well, as you said, there's three fixtures over the next seven days for your Belfast Giants. The most notable of one of which is the next one. The, the, ne- the most important game is the next game, and that is against the Nottingham Panthers at the SSE Arena on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. It is the Challenge Cup semi final, and as we've just been said, it's different to previous years. This will be a one stop shop for uh, the winner takes 
all the way to the was it winner takes all? It says on the front of the Sheffield Steelers program. <laughs> yeah. Don't know why it's a semi final. <laughs> the winner goes straight winner into the final. Of Maybe, course, I mean... And as been said, if the, if should the Giants win uh, on Wednesday evening, they will be hosting that uh, Challenge Cup final, uh, seven p.m. at the SSE Arena. Get yourself down there. It's going to be a great game. The Giants are, are in great shape going in. Um, obviously, we hope to see uh, some returning players maybe in that game. Um, who knows? I think I know because we've been missing, obviously, Darcy. Bush didn't play. Uh, Besco didn't play at the weekend. We'll see how they are coming into this game because I think, especially, I think Jordan Boucher says, is a player that the Nottingham Panthers fear. I think every, league, every team in the league fears him. Um, he's got that... Burst of speed that very little players in this league do. So, um, yeah, hopefully Bush is back. And you know what? We, we talk about speed and, and over a short distance to a certain extent as well. If we can get Darcy going, you know, he, he's starting to feel it again in practice. And, you know, he was, he was hoping to get back last week and obviously picked up a flipping flu as well. So, you know, he just, he just hasn't had the, the run of luck this course, year. So I'm um, hoping to get Darcy back tomorrow night for sure. Um, and, you know, if we can... You know what? If we can get Darcy moving here now in the next couple of weeks, he's, <laughs> he can make a big difference getting it down this stretch as well. Could be potentially could be a new player. Yeah, absolutely. That game Wednesday night tonight. If you're listening to this on Wednesday, of course. Yesterday, if you're listening to it on Thursday, and a few days ago, if you're listening to it on Friday, uh, the Belfast Giants against the Nottingham <laughs> Panthers in the Challenge Cup semi final, seven p.m. And if you can't get that, you can join Mister Kitchen on Belfast Giants TV. Uh, the other two games, we return to league action on Saturday away to the Coventry Blaze at the Sky Dome Saturday at 7 p.m. And you watch that on Blaze TV. And then the Manchester Storm come back to the uh, come back to the SSE Arena on Sunday at 4 p.m. Get down to that or watch it on Giants TV with Simon. Uh, any other business, I'm going to start with a quick one. I'm going to give a shout out to Campbell Porter, who's been sending me messages, basically saying that he's been offering me tickets to uh, to Anfield. He's, he's spent a lot of time in crew, close to his grandkids, and he's, he's been offering me tickets to Anfield, left, right, and center, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to go, but he does follow up by sending me a message, saying he's listen, basically listens to your view from the bridge on his way to the games from crew on the train, and we'll, we'll give him a shout, so enjoy it. Mean, he's no doubt on his, if he's listening to this, he might be on his way to watch the Leeds game on Wednesday, so uh, enjoy the enjoy the game against Leeds there, Campbell. Any, any other love, business, boys? Love, love Campbell. Miss Campbell. There, there's so <laughs> many characters that I haven't seen in a very long time because you obviously we're obviously stuck up in the gods now and you don't really get the time in the bowl and the bars aren't open afterwards just with the nature of this season. There's so many people like Campbell and uh, like like Big Noel and just so many faces that I can't wait to see again whenever things get back to a little bit of normal. Um, but just based on that, Paddy, I, I don't know why this is becoming a shout-out segment, but um, I was making my way out of the arena um, after the Fife game on Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. Friday? Saturday. Um, uh, and just uh, there, there's a, a gang of, of hardy individuals. Uh, you'll always find kind of around the players that are inside the back of the arena, standing in the rain, whatever else. Um, I was making my way out through uh, to, to leave and um, there was kind of stopped by a few of them and, and they had some really lovely things to say about AVFTB and about uh, kind of listening and, and watching the show. So um, Lucy, Sky and Callie, I think. Um, and also I met Linnea Rutherford, um, who contributes regularly to the fan agenda and, and her partner and, uh, and a young fella, Joel, another Joel, uh, Joel Connor, I think he is. Um, but, but really nice folks. And they were very complimentary about the show. So just uh, you, you forget sometimes that people take time out of their day. You know, to, to me, this is sitting down with my friends and talking about hockey on a, on a Tuesday night. But you forget that people actually have us as part of their week and, and how much of a, a privilege that is for us. So um, genuine gratitude for for everybody who, who takes the time and, and listens to us. Egypt's talking hockey. It's, uh, it's really very kind. So thank you. Yeah, here, here. I, 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 uh, I agree with that, and a uh, big, a big thanks to those guys, Simon. Then from you, yeah, apparently that guy, the kid Joel, who was uh, out the back of the arena, was named after him. Um, but I'm just um, <laughs> um, the uh, the real the, Neil Joel Neil, absolutely, hundred percent. Not Jim, not Jim um, Neil, my favorite Neil. No, oh, Jim needs, that's enough of that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, no, look, I just wanted the OSC desk will be closed tomorrow night. The uh, the game is run by the Elite League, obviously. Of course. So the OI, OSC volunteers are taking a well-earned night off after working hard at the desk over the last few weeks. And um, massive thanks to them and um, from my point of view. And then also the the uh, the golf night last Tuesday night as well. We got so many good positive comments about the um, the golf night. And, and even though it was in the rain and I started the last week's show with Moody on because it was freezing. But um, no, it was another good night. So it's... Hopefully, as I say, we can organize another few events this this 
this uh, current year has been a real nightmare for trying to organise fan events and and you know with, with with the end of the tunnel um, and the light at the end of that tunnel getting brighter for you know coming down the stretch and obviously playoffs and stuff like that. We just don't want to take a chance of any of the players um, getting sick and, and we need to keep them all healthy because we're up for for three possible awards here and I want them all like. So um, yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, hopefully we can get something to look for. We're already looking forward to next season. We've got things already planned for next year, which is great. So all good. Brilliant. I, I just want to add one more, just because you've reminded me of it. We're talking about the volunteers, and they they are worth their weight in gold. We've said this time and time again, and I think you know over the years, I think I've gone a bit got a bit complacent about what actually takes place on a match night and the amount of stuff that goes on and goes into creating a match night. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but I brought my kids to Saturday's game, so it's actually but rather than doing all the stuff that I would normally do, which you know go to the pub beforehand, meet up with some guys, go to the bridge, and come up meet you guys, spend some time in the media suite you do whatever without doing all of that i spent actually some time just what would be as the normal punter st- sat in the seat you know, with, with with my kids enjoying the whole setup and you come to really appreciate the amount of effort that goes in on a match night to create these was a remarkable spectacle it, not just the game itself but everything around it stuff that over the years have become quite complacent about seeing and, and taking place but when i see my own kids enjoying it massively you realize what it actually means ever from the game itself and all the music and stuff that matt mcgyver does and the amount that enjoyed that to the to the guys wearing the big zorbs and playing the the, the bubble hockey or whatever on the ice that that, that rushing absolutely adored and they do the <laughs> chuck a puck to, to walking around and all the stuff that you know all the all the you know getting the stuff with the 50 50s and, and all the stuff that goes around in the concourse that even even the how colorful and how well the arena looks now with all the new branding and stuff around you and the stuff that the, the, the hard work that the guys behind the scenes like Sinead and all have done to, 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 to put this branding in when this you know I know there's a, there's a whole load of other things that are going to be open new bars whatever all the part, as part of the pavilion when all this comes together but to Towards the end of the season, the start of next season, the 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 SSE Arena, as as my own wife said when we were at the game, you know, and I've dragged her to many of the rinks up and down this country uh, over the years to, to go and watch hockey from not just the the, the, the joys of Altrincham, you know, the the Brayhead and Fife and Dundee, you know, we we've, we've seen it all. The um, she has stated she time and time again that coming back to the SSE arena is the highest standard of spectatorship with regards to what you're offered in in the elite. Yes, the joys of Altrincham, Simon. The uh, the, uh, the 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 high the highest standard of 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 what you get as a spectator in this league and we see it so many times from fans who come across with double headers who enjoy themselves not just because the city's a fantastic city and i say that as a pr- I'm a proud man of the city but what the actual giants offer within the ssc arena as a package you know from everything that's on the screens and the entertainment that's there it's second to none in, in the elite league it's certainly it leads the elite league in, in what they offer and I'm, i was a very a very proud dad and a very proud belfast giants fan when i when i was looking around and seeing what what we were providing for for the fans and uh, long may that continue because it's the likes of the volunteers and everybody in the concourse and everybody behind the scenes who put in so much effort to create that match night and it works and it really works so so well yeah, done look, again you're, you're absolutely right Pat. i mean i can't I, I was at the arena at, i think it was about quarter to ten on saturday morning um a couple of things that do um uh michael bar and karen uh were both there just after that um, Glover wasn't, I think he was either there or just riding about the same time as me. Um, you know, there's, there's so many people. Yes. Okay. That, you know, at the end of the day, Glover's are from, from half nine in the morning until half 11 at night. Taff is there uh, on a game morning from seven thirty eight 8 o'clock right through to 2 AM. Um, you know, it's all those wee things. And yes, I get their, you know, their, their employees. I absolutely understand that. But, you know, putting in 12, 14, 16 hour days um, just to make everything easier for the players um, and the coaching staff is, you know, it's, it's absolutely exemplary. And I know it happens at other ranks and other organizations throughout the league, but I don't really care about them. I only care about the Belfast Chance. Um, and uh, the, our volunteers are second to them. I don't care. As I say, you know, well, are there, that's 50 50 tickets. So it's shirt off the back. And, and then Janet brings up. Uh, 15s um, for uh, Emma Noble up in the the uh, the, the production suite. They're, we're absolutely outstanding. Always um, are. But 
Absolutely. And then we, we need, again, we need, Whiteside's been away for three weeks doing the Olympics. Um, he's back today. He's back today. So he'll be at the game tomorrow night. But he's still been controlling the game and, and doing bits and pieces, preparing the webcasts, uh, graphics, doing everything over there for the webcast while he's sitting Simon, sorry to the Shout out to uh, to Emma Noble and also Stoopsy, Rachel Stoops, who have been, I think, editing the highlights in, in Neil's absence. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, yeah that's, I mean, that's she was there. Was, uh, Emma was, Rachel was doing it until nearly six o'clock on Sunday morning um, awesome. to get those highlights out for eight o'clock. It's brilliant. Amazing. Amazing. And then, like you, know, David McCammon and stuff, with regards to the announcing and, uh, and, and people who enjoy, but we all enjoy what we do. They all enjoy what they do. They all enjoy being part of the organisation. They enjoy the game. They enjoy the team. They enjoy the sport. And it just shows that you have that passion for the game. You have that passion for the product, and it shines through. And it definitely, I know. And obviously, people listen to this and go, "Well, you're biased because you're a Belfast Giants fan." And yes, that's yeah, absolutely um, right. But but, if, but 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 it also rings true that if it wasn't up to scratch, if it wasn't what something we're proud of, we'd be calling it out. One hundred percent, we'd be calling it out. But True's it's story. not. It's perfect. It's great. That's but also that's not, not an example. There's, there's always sorry. It, there's always room for improvement, but as it is, it's a great standard <laughs> of stuff. But on that note, I think we're going to wrap the things up, gentlemen. The um, the three games. We got, got we got an R twenty, but it's okay. We're on. We got there for a wee bit. We got there. Perfect. Good job, boys. The uh, <laughs> uh the three games. Uh, the Wednesday night, the semi final against the Nottingham Panthers, seven p.m. at the SSC Arena. Uh, not on the season ticket because it's a late league game. Uh, but get yourself down there. Uh, the, or if you can't go um, watch it on Giants TV, go on. Sorry for jumping in, Paddy. Just looking at the clock on my <coughs> laptop, it's 22 22 on the 22nd of the second. 20. Are we finishing this on all the 22s? We're finishing. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> on all the hold 22s. Hurry up, hurry up. You've, Paddy, Paddy, you've, you've got it, Paddy. You've got it. Time out. <laughs> Company plays against Belfast Chance Saturday at 7 p.m. at the Sky Dome Arena. I watch hurry it on up. TV. Belfast Chance against Storm on Sunday, 4 p.m. Get down to the SSC Arena and face it, or watch it on Jan's TV. Big thanks to Mace, to Griff, to Cons, to oh, yeah. who else was there? Who else is there? It was uh, Andy Dixon, Adam Keith, Andrew Dixon, you know, Adam Keith. Thanks, thanks to, all the Cheers, thanks. To, to Senor David Majemsey joining us all the way from Tenerife. Thank you very much to you, gents. Joel, for the news. Simon, as thanks, well, boys. for doing the interviews. And Davey, as well, for cutting on holiday, cutting the cutting the highlights. Very kind of him to do that. Um, get us today at AVFTB on Twitter, Facebook, and all that sort of stuff. Wherever you are this weekend or the Wednesday night, we hope you enjoy your hockey. Four. We'll catch you here next time. On a view Three, from one. the bridge. Let's go! <laughs> 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 <laughs>